everyone, Lou here. After playing Martha is Dead last Halloween, around the same time, I decided to play the developer's previous game called Town of Light. Although it took me way too long, I thought it'd be fun to do a review for the Town of Light. <laughs> I should warn before I go any further that this game has a lot of triggers for those struggling with literally anything. SA, CSA, mental health struggles, self-harm, ending your own life, mistreatment of those with mental health struggles, and more are extremely heavy themes in this game. I don't mean just saying it or vaguely hinting at it, but strongly showing these themes, which I know could easily harm someone if they can't handle it. I know that something like this can deeply affect others, so I just want to warn now, and I definitely do not recommend this game if any of the things I I just mentioned are a heavy trigger for you. If you still want to watch this video, I'll be censoring a lot of the visuals as some of the visuals are too intense for even YouTube. Okay, so, The Town of Light was made by LKA, an Italian developer studio, and this was their first published game. From what I've seen from them in other videos on YouTube before, they've expressed that they like to explore mental health struggles of particularly women in Italy in the 1940s or 50s. Though I don't know if they're working on another game with this theme, I hope so, just because I feel like you can do a lot with this, especially if you're exploring how different disorders were handled by different class systems of the time period. Now, the Town of Light is inspired by an actual hospital that existed in Italy called Volterra. It was shut down in the late 70s though because it was quite literally every nightmare story you've ever heard about mental hospitals from movies and TV shows. The team did extensive research in not only visiting the location, which you can visit because it's actually a paranormal hotspot in Italy, but interviewed surviving patients of the place that described the disgusting actions there and wrote our main character based off multiple different stories of patients there. I actually really appreciate the research they did, but some criticized the game for showing triggering themes, as well as felt that a lot of extremely sensitive subject matter like self-harm and our main character's actual disorder were romanticized or shown in an extremely shock value type of style. However, that's the point of this review. Let's see if the negative reviews are true or if there's something extremely positive about this game. First, let's take a look at the story. You play as Rene, described as a 16-year-old from the 1940s who's revisiting the mental hospital she was forced into as a teenager by her mother and is now reliving the events in 2016. You may ask yourself how Rene can still be 16 in 2016 if she's from the 1940s, but I'll get to that later. The game then goes on about the horror she witnessed and experienced throughout this mental hospital, from being assaulted by guards, given torturous forms of quote-unquote therapy, tied to a bed, humiliated, and more. This game really does show that Rene basically knew nothing but suffering throughout her life. There is also a diary and a sort of flashback segment that explains more about her life prior to going to the mental hospital. Mainly, she was assaulted by her mother's boyfriend and a local priest, her mother was extremely abusive, she was heavily bullied, and a lot more. Some of which is hard to figure out just because everything is told in a vague and hazy image in the game, and even in her diary, it's pretty vague. Of course, maybe that was the point too, you know? Another thing for me is that Renee's actual disorder is extremely difficult to pinpoint. I've seen some say it's solely PTSD, depression, BPD, bipolar, schizophrenia, or DID, but it's also possible it's a combination of a lot of disorders. I mean, she had an extremely traumatic childhood, but also clearly suffered from hallucinations and mood swings, so it's really hard to say exactly what it could be. I want to personally say like schizophrenia and PTSD if only because that matches up with a lot of her behavior to me but I'm not a mental health expert and she was 14 when she was admitted into the hospital which is extremely rare to show symptoms that young as it's usually in your early 20s that symptoms show up but her mother clearly had mental health issues of her own so maybe it was extremely hereditary to a point where she showed symptoms much earlier than the average case. Again, I'm not a mental health expert so I'm just going off of what I've researched in the past for games like this. What we know next is that after Renee's mother died, which prior to her death she was actually trying to get Renee out, and being told that 
caused Rene to go into a complete spiral where she tried to hurt herself several times, knowing she would never be let out because she had no caretakers outside as she was deemed incapable of taking care of herself by the Italian government. Which is incredibly sad to me that her mother's death was basically a death sentence for her. Especially when her mother tried to write to her and tell her she was going to try and save her. To me that just seems so tragic. Due to constantly harming herself, doctors at the hospital made the extremely common and drastic decision made around this time to lobotomize her, which you do see the full procedure in this game and is extremely disturbing. In fact, I did not record that footage at all because I didn't even want to see it again editing for this video. I've seen a lot of shows and movies with scenes like this, but something about this felt so much more disturbing because we saw how Rene was suffering as well as the fact that there was no other sound or music in this scene. Now to some this scene was too much shock value, but eh, I wouldn't say shock value as much as just showing you the common outcome for young women in Rene's position. I mean, just google Rosemary Kennedy if you want to see a real life example. After that, the game is narrated by Renee's nice therapist, voiced by Cryotic for some reason, who explains she basically ended up in a completely vegetative state who couldn't do anything but just sit there. It's presumed that she died that way years and years later, which is just heartbreaking but sadly realistic given how quite literally evil the actual Volterra and other mental hospitals were at this time. Now to answer the question, you play as Renee's ghost in this game. Some say due to her procedure or mental health issues, she can't move on and is forever stuck in the place she eventually died in, which is just sad. However, if you're just as Renee's ghost has been an interesting question because there are a lot of questions you can answer in this game that's more of an artsy opinion piece than an actual answer that sort of gives you a different route. The ending is the same, but it's just the direction to get from A to B is is different depending on these answers. Mainly it's just to show more of Renee's incredibly heartbreaking life. It's also possible you were playing someone exploring the hospital that Renee possessed to try and find answers only because that's a big theory I see jump around a lot. Some also say it's possible we were actually playing as an elderly Renee just because she sees herself as young because that's where she's mentally stuck due to her procedure and mental health issues. I mean, I can see it, especially when the creators tried to say this game has no quote supernatural elements, which I call bullshit personally or a mistranslation, but her procedure basically left her in a completely vegetative state, but her nice doctor said there was little to no hope of her having autonomous recovery, so I I doubt that, but it's plausible. I mean, theoretically, Rene would be in her 80s at the time this game takes place. And later patches of this game, which is the one on Steam, replaced her voice actress with someone clearly distinctly older than Rene's age of 16 at the time she was admitted, so super possible, or it's just Rene died older, like in her 50s or 60s. Overall, this game's story is extremely heavy, like, this is not a game to chill and relax to, this is really the kind of game I recommend playing by yourself when you just want to see something fucking depressing. Definitely makes me glad I live in 2023 and not in the 1940s, which is the game's point basically, but I definitely could have gone without the heavy vagueness and lobotomy scene even though I understand its impact. The gameplay is what many would call a walking simulator. Unlike Martha's Dead, which had some basic but interesting puzzles, a lot of the Town of Light is just walking from A to B and pressing some stuff here and there. I will say that the hospital for me is extremely hard to navigate only because all the signs are written in Italian, and while some words are close to its English counterpart that you can kind of understand it, some words made me end up going in circles, so for me personally, text on screen translating the room name would have been nice. Unless that was a thing and my game glitched out because that was also a thing. 
Atmosphere wise, this game is very intense. Although there is music in the flashback sequences and Renee's hallucinations, there is no music in the main portions of the game, which makes it even creepier to go through an empty, rusty hospital with only your footsteps echoing in the room. This game also heavily lacks any jump scares. The only real ones is just like a loud screech in an image that fades over when Renee remembers something extremely traumatic in that room. I highly recommend that if you're going to play this game, play it alone because it will absolutely make the hairs on your neck stand up from the tension and I think that's pretty great. I had someone walk into the room while I was playing this game alone at night and their hello scared the absolute shit out of me while I was playing. The soundtrack is also surprisingly good, which is something I don't mention often, but I genuinely really like the soundtrack. The ending song in particular I found to be very beautiful and fits the game very well. This sounds weird, but it kinda reminded me of Akira Yamaoka, but more... European, if that makes any sense. Oh, and it should be obviously stated that the people models for this game and the outdoor scenery is really fucking ugly, but this was their first actual game, so I give it a pass because they clearly learned their lesson when it came to Martha's Dead, which was a gorgeous game to play visually. Overall, the gameplay is very simple and the human models are ugly as shit, but the game design and soundtrack are very good. Genuinely, if the story is lacking, you gotta at least appreciate the set design and sound, you know? The Town of Light is just fucking sad. I mean, yes, Martha is Dead is sad, obviously, but damn, at least the gorgeous visual scenery helped give me a break. This game is just pure dread throughout. I can see why some would be so heavy to criticize this game, though. I know constantly bringing up mental health in horror games has become a hot and controversial topic in the industry, but I mean, I could be controversial myself, and that I believe it's not bad to show someone who doesn't struggle with a specific or any issue, just how horrifying it can be to have that specific issue. I mean, for me personally, the anxiety minigame in the game The Cat Lady is a brilliant example of what it feels like to have an anxiety disorder from my personal experience. But I get that for some, it could be offensive or problematic to make gameplay out of a mental health symptom. Of course, everyone is entitled to their own opinion on that. Just remember to keep it clean in the comments, guys. I don't approve of mudslinging other people and definitely not harassing other people for having differing opinions on this particular topic. That and considering this game is set during World War II Italy, please know the comments on the you know what party or gosh forbid someone supporting that disgusting bullshit will be removed. Still, I do genuinely really like this game and I highly recommend to everyone who is able to, to give it a try. Now the game is extremely pricey at $18 on Steam and GOG right now, especially because this game can be 100% completed in about 5-ish hours if you were really taking your time, so I highly recommend buying it during a big sale because I bought this game for about 2 to $3 during a sale, which I think is a much better price to pay for this game. You can purchase The Town of Light on PS4, Xbox One, Steam, GOG, and Nintendo Switch at varying prices and quality concerning the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, the Switch version has like ass quality for some reason. Still though, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know this can be a pretty heavy game, but considering I deeply love psychological horror with a burning passion, I'm sure you guys can guess that I just had to talk about this game at some point. And hey, since it's July at the time of this video, why not listen to good old Lana Del Rey and have some summertime sadness with this game? What did you guys think of the video though? If you guys want me to cover any similar games to this one, be sure to let me know down below. Hey guys, thanks for watching! If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're new! If any of you would like to help support my channel in any possible way, my Ko-fi page is down below in the description along with all of my social media. For any subscribers, new or old, who'd like to help with video ideas or maybe just want to talk about anime or something, I have a fan server linked down below. See you next time!